Welcome back to Blue Line Patriot, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. So, um, for whatever reason, obviously, you're in the market for a 12-11, uh, I'm sorry, 5-11, 12-hour rush um, backpack. I've had this since 2012, maybe 2013. So, we're talking about 9 or 10 years, somewhere therein, um, of having this on my side every day. Um, I've had this through college courses. I've had this uh, on next to me sitting shotgun, uh, you know, on duty during patrols. Um, so this bag has been there and done that on my side every day. Um, plus and minus being in between jobs and vacations and stuff like that for the last nine, maybe ten years. And I got to say, um, this bag, if you're contemplating getting one, absolutely. Now this is my duty bag, and we're going to talk about the duty bag, but this is also a backpack review also. So again, 5.11, 12-hour rush. That's the bag this is, and I'm just going to basically get into it, what I carry in this bag on duty um, pretty much at all times. For the last nine years, how's it holding up? Well, I'll tell you right now, it's holding up great. Uh, my quick little five-second... Um, culmination is if you're considering it absolutely buy it it's a great pack um so i have the backpack but i also have two things attached to it as well um on this side i have a, a condor quick detach ifac um i'll get into this and explain it later uh, i also have a 511 magazine holder or, i'm sorry <laughs> magazine holder handcuff holder um, so what I have in here are just two, uh, extra handcuffs for whatever. Um, say for example, I make an arrest or whatever. Um, my handcuffs are on somebody, one or two pair, or maybe I arrest two people. So two pair are messed up, or maybe I need two for one person cause he's so big and fat. Uh, and then I need one pair for the other person. So that's why I have extra handcuffs and maybe I need two sets of handcuffs for two big fat people extra handcuffs so people wonder why well you know brawls at walmart and burger king i suppose all right so we covered this <clears throat> i'll get more into detail about the ifac later um and on this side i have attached um, a 511 radio pouch but i just put my magazine in there an extra 30 round mag uh, for me And soft points, that's our that's our duty ammo. Less collateral damage. So anyway, that's that. <clears throat> um, all right, so that's what I have attached to it. Everything else is the pack itself. Excuse me while I grab a sip of water and we continue. I hope you're all having a great day. I hope your day's going by fast and I hope you get home fast. Okay, diving back into this. So on the outside of it, obviously, we see two pens. They're both kind of beaten up. These are ch uh, chest decompression needles. They've been hanging out on the outside. They're part of my IFAC. They're just there for quick, uh, quick grab. Now, my hope is that somebody around me, if I ever need it, knows how to use these. That's why they're there. Some people are like, I'm hoping maybe if I get shot, hopefully freaking SWAT's around or something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just in case. You know what I mean? Um, that's why they're there. Some people are like, yo, you're not going to use those on anybody, are you? I'm like, fuck no. I'm getting them to the ambulance, man. Like, I know how to, of course, um, you know, I would seal a chest wound, sure. But as far as sticking them, uh -huh, I don't know, man. Maybe if a paramedic or an EMT asked me for one, I'd be like, yeah, absolutely. Here you go. After, I, you know, whatever. But anyway, that's why those are there. Luckily, never had to use them yet. Um, I do have a green, I'm sorry, orange glow stick on the outside of here. Um, why? I don't know. It looks cool. Of course, American flag, and I'm missing my name tape here, and I'm missing my name tape because I got to stay as anonymous as possible and low-key as possible so that as a police officer, I could tell you guys real shit, and I don't have to watch what I say so much, right? Officer 401 and... Daniels and whatnot, they're not saying what they want to say. They can't. Everybody knows who they are now. It sucks, right? Uh-huh. Keep my anonymity, anonymity as long as possible. So, 
Um, in the pack, what's the pack all like? Well, let's start on the back first so we can get it out of the way. <clears throat> we do have um, a little compartment here. Now, it's basically good for nothing except maybe um, an armor plate. Ah, you know, it is like me to have one just sitting around and just to look around and be able to throw one in. But all my plates right now are in plate carriers, and it would be too much for me to demonstrate that for you right now. I'm sorry. You should have got me on a better day. Anyway, so a nice compartment here, a uh, second little hidden compartment here, but also with this big plastic thing, which if you're the survival type and you're out in the snow, you could use this as a shovel to dig into it. Saw that. Saw Bear Grylls do that one time a while ago. Now I'm a, now I'm a survival expert. All right, so we're closing this up. I guess you could put a hydration pack in there too if you wanted to, but basically just extra storage for whatever you feel like putting in there. It's not much, but there's a bit. These straps, uh, they're holding up pretty good. I was starting to fray in here maybe about a year ago, and I took a lighter to it and just, you know, burnt down all the frays. And um, it's been holding up pretty good. I mean, it's a little, it's a little like, worn out down here, but a quick little... A quick little lighter across there will singe all that up. It'll be looking just fine in no time. <clears throat> you know what? We're pretty much just chilling. So, you know what? I got time. I like to talk. I know I'm not going to burn my house down. Anybody, anybody in the military will be like, yep, that's, that's, that's what you got to do right there. For all you Navy guys, get that gear adrift. Get that gear drift out of there. Yeah, man, you're seeing real people do real stuff right now. This is like behind the scenes stuff that I'll probably take out, but I might just leave in. Because you know what? I'm just kind of demonstrating how easy you can maintain this pack. Because so far, if I've had any problems with it, all I needed was some, uh, I'll tell you about that in a second, but all I needed to fix this up is a lighter and uh, paracord. So anyway, we've seen the back, the straps, I was just about to talk about the straps before I got distracted with, <clears throat> with down here, but now it's looking, now it's looking nice and fresh again. Um, so yeah, the pack, the like I said, I had some fray here. But these things, man, I wish these straps would just go right into the pack. They have this yoke thing here, and they do that with their armor too, or their play carriers, I should say. And it sucks. I hate it so much. They say it distributes more weight, but man, I would rather just. It, it seems like it pulls down in the back more, and you have more weight on the bottom of your back. Like I want weight on the top of my back, so I want I want this pulled up as much as possible. So I want these straps going into the pack man but anyway whatever so it's got that yoke for its intended use now in here this is a good place to have glasses i just have a lens cloth and a pair of binoculars because why not at least you could stay a block away from uh people while you read their plates you know <laughs> see if they have fenders on their trailers oh shit i do some traffic work here and there uh let's see in here second pouch we got boo boo kit band-aid tylenol eye drops neosporin uh alcohol wipes bam um yeah so i have this because i've done this on many multiple occasions well maybe twice i say multiple probably twice but um the tylenol i have the tylenol because if i'm doing a lot of traffic and it's like nighttime even in the daytime just the strobing lights will give me a headache. So I have Tylenol for that, Advil. Um, Band-Aids because well, I can't tell you how many times I've run my finger across like sh like spider webbed glass to see like did it come through or whatever. And then I slice my finger open. So Band-Aids. <laughs> um, in the springtime, I get crazy allergies. So that's for pollen. Neosporin is also for cuts. Yeah, so, trust me, it's not a bad idea to have one of these around. Uh, wallet, <sighs> gotta have a wallet, why not? Um, Ridge Wallet, man. Yo, check that out. Ridge Wallet, get your Ridge Wallets, get your Ridge Wallets, yo. 
I'm not sponsored, I swear, but maybe they should sponsor me, huh? Um, two extra flashlights, gotta have two. This one is a Nightcore, um, N-I-T-E Core. Yo, Nightcore, sponsor me too. Or I'll be honest about this flashlight, I'll give you one week. All right, um, and then we have a stream light. This one's very, very light. Uh, but yeah, I just have two backup flashlights just in case. Why not? Um, chapstick because t I I need chapstick a lot. Lighter because got to fix things on your uniform sometimes, and a lighter goes a long way. It's mostly just stuff. It's mostly just strings and strands and stuff. You just hold a lighter close to them and they coil up and turn into like hard plastic. So it's kind of a cool fix. Um, <clears throat> let's look at the big compartment here. Got to do my buckles. Oh, before I get in there, let's talk about this. <clears throat> so, as you can see, the zipper's busted on me. Well, I think one of the zippers busted on me. So what I did is I got paracord. I threaded it through the actual zipper part and tied it into a bunch of knots until it was something I can grab onto. I think the other one was holding just strong, and they're the same exact ones that are down here. Same ones that are right here. <clears throat> um, yeah, so uh, these... I think only one just came loose and came off, so I did that. And then for symmetry purposes, I went ahead and cut the other one and put another one on it. And the same thing, just tied it in a bunch of knots. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> so let's open this. So in here, what do I have? Uh, pinch pad. If you've ever seen one of these, that's called a pinch pad. That's what we write tickets on and stuff. <clears throat> uh, actually, all my stuff's in there. Pretty much everything. Domestic papers, um, traffic and non-traffic citations, parking tickets. Basically, my whole desk is right here. <clears throat> Sewing kit for, I don't know, emergency sews, I guess. Um, and I've used that one time on my vest, but whatever. It's not bad to have. And in here, of course, I have toothbrush and toothpaste because you never know. When you're going to get stuck on a double, <clears throat> or you're going to eat that bad lunch or some shit, and then you're like, damn it, I still have to go talk to people. So some guys don't think about that, but you're dealing with somebody who's already pissed off, and your breath fucking stinks, and you're a cop, and you're in your, and you're like, in their face. Just fucking brush your teeth, man. <laughs> so that's just my thing. You can thank my mother. Um, and a notepad and, and stuff in here in case things go crazy. That's for basically extended, um, what do you call them? Extended statements and stuff like that. Okay, so we've seen that. Okay, so the smaller pouch here is my, well, the main one I'm in and out of all the time, mainly because of the charger. So in the top here, we have uh, Crayola pencils. Um, I think I've made some cards before with some of these, but they're not bad you know to have like for uh i don't know say you have like a kit you're dealing with kids or something at least you can pull the crayons out or the markers out and they can go to town multicolored pens again for you know being sensitive to kids um black magic marker for whatever um two pens they don't say anything on them thank goodness i forgot about those <laughs> Anything that that blows my cover, guys, I like. I gotta be like, pfft, get the fuck out. Um, let's see, hand sanitizer. Got hand sanitizer. Uh, got this uh, during COVID. I thought it said something about COVID on it too. It was like just like stuff donated to the department, and I still have it. Um, <clears throat> breath mints because again, don't have stinky breath out there when you're dealing with angry people. It only sets them off. Uh, extra, extra little taser cartridge. That's just there. Uh, charger for, uh, probably one of my lights on my vest. Which, by the way, I'll show you guys my, uh, my vest and my, I'll go into detail on my duty belt and whatnot. Um, in a different video. Oh, and then, huh, I can make an entire video about these, which I probably will. Actually, you know what? Screw it. I will. This right here is laser training. This is really cool. If you don't know what this is, I guess there's other videos on YouTube to watch, and then I'll have one soon on this too. But 
Um, you could check them out, or I could just tell you about it right here, right? So basically, all you do is you load this like laser bullet up into uh, your chamber. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to tell you about it now. I'll wait till the video so I don't kill content. But anyhow, you load this uh, laser bullet up into your, your chamber, and there's a button on the back of it where the uh, firing pin is, or I'm sorry, where the primer is on a bullet. So when the firing pin hits that, it gives you like a split second where now there is a laser on the wall. And your phone, if you set it up, your phone can track that on like an imposed target. So it's kind of like using a FATS firearms training system. If you've ever used the FATS, that's on your phone now. But just the bullseye and target stuff. <clears throat> um, if you haven't used the FATS, well, you're missing out on the best video game in the world. Um, but yeah, for laser targeting, laser training, whatever, very coolly recommended. But I will say, big caveat, uh, be extremely, extremely careful when you're done training with these because sometimes people will do thousands of repetitions with these, pulling the gun out of the holster, aiming it at the wall, pointing, squeezing the trigger, and then they'll go back to a regular carry, they'll holster their gun up, well, they'll load it up, condition one, reholster it, They'll just be walking around and they'll have that muscle memory in their head to go ahead and pull that gun, point it at the wall, and squeeze the trigger. Maybe you're aiming at the light switch because it's a small target. And then what do you know? There goes your light switch because you just shot it. Yeah, you're good, but you also just ND'd, right? So be very, very, very careful when, when training like that. So that is the bag. Let's look at the bottom. Even the bottom is not... It's not like worn out at all. It's still looking good. It's got a, a little bit of a rip right here. <clears throat> kind of like, you can barely see it. There's like two of them. But even so, that's nothing. I don't even know if I could see through that. That's after 10 years. Nine years, 10 years, whatever. Um, yeah, that's it. And of course we have Molly. Oh, you know what? There's one thing I forgot about up here is that there's a space in the back for hydration, for a hydration pouch. You could put it back there. The cool thing is, is that the hose can come up through here. See that shit? Mm, that's right. So it can get up here. You could loop it through this. Keep them down. Bring it down as far as you want it up front. So that's cool. A little straw area for it. And buckle these back up. So, um, I said I would talk about my IFAC. So I'll talk about my IFAC. And you know what, I think I'll do a different video on my magazine. Because you might have noticed there's some orange on the bottom. So, my IFAC, I highly recommend one of these. They're just good to have. Um, now, how this works is, you basically, all you do is you pop the um, clip up here. Now I have a cat tourniquet that's easily you know basically ready to go i have this pre-staged so it'll wrap around my leg um so if it'll wrap around my leg it'll wrap around my arms so it's just less work to have to do to like resize it whatever so i just keep it on a big wide setting and get it on there if i can get it on there i can get it on my arms so that's how i preset that <clears throat> once i pull it apart actually so once I pull it apart, it's just this, and I just rip the tab, and I'm ready to go. Hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, after Mr. Murphy arrives. Those of you who might not be familiar with Murphy's Law, you should look it up. <laughs> it's a true irony at its finest. All right, so I gotta press this. I'm just gonna stick it in my pocket for right now. I'm so OCD. I'm supposed to be making a video. I'm getting wrapped up around how this is whatever. All right, so anyway, you pop that, whatever. You can take your um, take your tourniquet right away. Uh, this red handle right here. You just <clears throat> rip that off of of the pack itself. It's got that Velcro that's all like fuzzy here. And it's got the hard Velcro over here. So basically all you're doing is sticking it to it. <clears throat> and that, uh, what do you call it, that buckle is coming around and securing it. But yeah, you can grab this off of the bag if you want to. You don't have to. You can just open this right up. 
and I have this set <laughs> naturally another um, another tourniquet uh, pops right out this is set the exact same way the other one is so I'm just gonna put that one to the actually I'll just talk to it. Um, <clears throat> so we have that tourniquet uh, hang on before we get the airway we have the tourniquet we have uh, a bunch of gauze pads I think we have five of them five four by four gauze pads in here um, Three, I forget what they are. Three, four yards of, of packing gauze. You use that for packing or whatever. Um, also, I have an H bandage in here. It's really H bandage. This is good. So basically, the way you uh, you want to take it is like you shut off the plumbing, which means if there's bleeding, stop the bleeding. Tourniquet the shit, right? So stop the plumbing and then mop up the mess. So. You stop the blood, <clears throat> and then you bandage it up. So you're going to tourniquet first, and then you're going to bandage. Now for airway, we talked about the chest decompression needles. Um, but also, speaking, it's, it's all breathing related. So we have chest seals. We have an NGO, nasal pharyngeal airway, just in case. Also, another chest decompression needle. Um... Let's see here. And again, that's that's like last resort type shit. And also a rescue mask here in case uh, I have to do CPR on somebody. So this is for giving breaths and hopefully not getting AIDS. <laughs> uh, you got to have fun on this job. Uh, and in here is just another, um, another boo-boo kit with just random boo-boo shit in it. But um, that's basically how I have it set up. It's, it's airway, blood, and boo-boos. Airway, blood, boo-boos. So, that's that. Alright guys, so uh, we got the bag back together. This one on like, you know, piece of cake. No issue. Um, and yeah, so that's the pack after nine years. Alright. Um, maybe ten years. Very, very... Um, uh, very dependable pack, I gotta say. So, 5-11, 12 hour rush. Uh, if you're thinking about buying one, get it. It's great. For duty, it's perfect. Um, so, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about something that maybe some people have been noticing. I don't know. Maybe you didn't. But maybe you did. Um, my duty rifle in the background. <clears throat> so, I have tape here because I have my badge number there. I can't reveal my badge number to the internet because I want to keep things real with you all. But, um, check this out. I wanted to at least show you this. So, I paint penned all of my, uh, little, en little engravings there. I'm trying to get it to where it's, like, focusing well. Because it's having a hell of a time. Well, anyway. <clears throat> so, I got into all those little, all those areas, and I hooked them up. <laughs> all orange. And it's, it's cool for a reason. It sucks that I can't tell you the reason. But it's cool. So I did all that. Safe fire. And then on this side, when you, when you switch the safety, it like goes from safe to semi. And vice versa. So pretty awesome. I think that's cool. I wanted to show that off to you guys. Um, now I'm going to, I don't know, I think soon I'll do a, a review of two Nightcore lights. Um, so Nightcore, you know, sponsor me. I'm going to say some dirty shit about your one light. <laughs> uh, shit. Okay, guys. So that's my um, duty bag. Highly recommended. Um, and next couple of videos I have coming out is basically uh, centered around duty gear. Because I know I haven't done one of them yet. So I think it's kind of cool. Get one of them out. Anyway. That's all I got for you guys today. Stay safe, stay smart, and talk to you all next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Before you go, I want to let you know about my store. The link is in the description below. If you like tactical, anti-woke stuff, this is the place for you. I have lots of t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, and other stuff that make for great gifts, underclothes, gear, and loud and proud statements. Look cool or just troll the snowflakes with Blue Line Patriot apparel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to stay up to date with my content. But above all, stay safe, stay smart. Blue Line Patriot, out.